Okay, with this question, we're going to be dealing with the income and substitution effect with an inferior good. So we're going to be uh, working in the too good economy, a uh, too good model, where uh, we have a budget line and indifference curves, and then we're going to have a price change, and then we're going to have to make sure that we've set up our indifference curves correctly to account for the inferior good, and then we're going to see the direction of the income and substitution effects and how it's kind of a, a special case dealing with an inferior good. Um, an inferior good being a good where if income rises, uh, then we expect to purchase less of that type of good. So something like spam. Uh, so this question is borrowed from Krugman Wells Microeconomics, Chapter 11, which is the Consumer Preferences and Consumer Choice Chapter, Question 14. So this question asks, uh, Katya commutes to work. Um, she can either use public transport or her own car. Her indifference curves obey the four properties of indifference curves for ordinary goods. Uh, those four properties I covered in uh, another video kind of introducing in income and substitution effects and we'll just skip over them but they ensure that the indifference curve is a well-behaved you know uh, consistent looking indifference curve um, so part a is asked to uh, draw cut his budget line with car travel on the vertical axis and public transport on the horizontal axis suppose that Katya consumes some of both goods draw indifference curves that helps you illustrate her optimal consumption bundle okay so I'll do that right now and here we have the two good model. So you can see quantity of car travel on the vertical axis and quantity of public transport on the horizontal axis. Uh, and then I just kind of arbitrarily drew in this budget line that I'm going to call BL sub 1, budget line sub 1. And then we have our red indifference curve. So the optimal consumption bundle is somewhere right about here where you have this quantity of car travel, some arbitrary amount that we don't know the exact amount yet. And then we have this amount uh, public transport. So this person, Katya, is maximizing their consumption. They're maximizing their utility by uh, using car travel this much and uh, public transport this much. Moving on to Part B. Uh, part B asks, now the price of public transport falls, uh, draw Katya's new budget line. So public transport is on the horizontal axis. And right now, this point right here, this intersection of the budget line and the, the quantity of public transport axis, represents if Katya were to spend all of their money on uh, public transport, they would be able to purchase this quantity of um, public transport. So if the price of public transport do goes down, then we'll have a new budget line where this intersection here, you know, the point at which if they were to spend all of their money on public transport, this point's going to be pushed out further this way. Uh, so let me rearrange that. This new budget line here, BL sub 2, is a new budget line given a decrease in the price of public transport. So again, this axis is the quantity of public transport. So if the price has gone down, our old, starting on our old budget line here, we, had, we could represent that decrease in the price of transport by a shift outward of the budget line along this axis. Um, and then along the car travel axis, uh, this intersection, this point over here, uh, stays exactly the same uh, because you know the price of car travel hasn't changed and also income hasn't changed. So for part B, um, all we have to do is draw this new budget line reflecting the decrease in the price of public transport, which changes the intersection uh, right where I'm pointing here uh, to this new budget line. This new budget line has pushed out the kind of frontier of what Katya is able to purchase. Uh, implying that they're going to get this new, they're going to have a beyond a new indifference curve and a new consumption bundle in a second. So uh, that's yeah, this is just Katya's new budget line. Let's move on to Part C. So Part C reads: For Katya, public transport is an inferior good, but not a given good. Um, for given goods, I think I'm going to cover that in another video. They're kind of a, a, another where inferior good is a special case, and given good is even more special case cover that later. I'll put a link at the end of this video. Um, draw an indifference curve that illustrates her optimal consumption bundle after the price of public transport has fallen. Is Katya consuming more or less of public transport? So to do this we need to draw a very special indifference curve um, that reflects that public transport is an inferior good. So how do you draw that indifference curve? Uh, let me show you the end result. Uh, and then explain how, uh, looking at the income and substitution effects, we can know that it's inferior good. So, give me one second. All right, so here we've done that. 
we now have the new indifference curve uh, IC2 or label in a second. Uh, so given the price change, we have this new budget line over here. Um, we started out at this optimal consumption bundle with this quantity of uh, car travel, this quantity of public transport. We now have the new optimal consumption bundle over here. The special case I did here with the indifference curve is that notice that uh, the indifference curves um, as they get closer to the car travel axis are pretty close to each other, where the indifference curves as they get closer to the public transport axis are pretty far away from each other. Um, so first off, you can see that the new optimal consumption bundle with um, uh, at this new level here has an increase in both public transport. So we went from this point to this point here. Uh, and then we also see an increase of car travel from this point to this point. So we've increased, given the decrease in the price of public transport, we've increased our consumption of both car travel and public transport. And then it's important that, um, so remember this is an inferior good public transportation. So uh, when we break down this change here into income and substitution effects, it's important that we'll show that the income effect is going to be negative here. Uh, so let me show that again for you. Okay, so to break down the move from this point to this point into the substitution effect uh, and the income effect, what we need to do is draw this new uh, budget line that we're going to call BL sub S. So BL sub S is parallel to the new budget line, to where we, the budget line that we ended up with. So this is the budget line we ended up with after the uh, decrease in the price of public transport. So we draw a line that's parallel to it over here. Uh, that BL sub S line, which is the blue dotted line, and then we bring it back to the old, the initial indifference curve, uh, to the point where this line is tangent to that old indifference curve. So what's that saying is, um, given our new situation here, you know, the new budget line, um, imagine if we were to take away Katya's income uh, to the point where that they're, ex they're uh, take away their income such that they're back to that initial indifference curve. So the move from here to here is all the income effect because what we've done is um, we've kept the relative prices the same but all we're doing is moving them from this indifference curve to this indifference curve by changing their income so the point from here to here is all income effect um, and because this is an inferior good we're showing that the income effect is negative And then the move from this point here, the initial starting point, the initial consumption bundle, uh, with the old budget line and the old the old difference curve, to this new kind of hypothetical point over here, uh, that's the substitution effect. So what we've done here from this point to this point is we've basically kept their uh, incomes the same. Uh, we, we technically haven't kept their incomes the same. We've, we've kept them on the same indifference curve. Um, and all we've done is change the relative prices of public goods, of tra public transport, and um, car travel. So we've changed the slope of this budget line to the new budget line slope. So the relative prices of this BL sub S, uh, this hypothetical budget line, is the same as the old one. Uh, but we've kept them on the old, sorry, uh, the this BL sub S has the same relative prices as the our, our final budget line, uh, but we've kept them on the initial uh, indifference curve, so that going from this point here to this point here is all substitution effect. So they're on the same indifference curve, just the relative prices have changed. So it's kind of like, okay, we're going to change prices a little bit, but we're going to adjust their income such that they stay on that indifference curve, so we could see how uh, they substitute from one good into the other. So going from this point to this point, they've decreased car travel, uh, and then they've increased public transport, which uh, seems pretty obvious if um, the price of public transport were to decrease. So if public transport de the price of public transport decreases relative to car travel, then you're going to uh, shift your consumption away from car travel uh, and into uh, public transport. So the substitution effect, given a decrease in the price of public transport, is positive. So we have this move here. Um, and then the income effect, so going from this initial budget, from the initial indifference curve up to the final indifference curve, given relative prices are the same. So going from this point to this point is all income effect. 
um, because this is an inferior good, that income effect is going to be negative. So even though uh, in this like theoretical sense of income, you know, shifting them from this indifference curve to this in curve, uh, we've increased it. Uh, because public transport's an inferior good, that sh the um, shift consumption is going to decrease. So the definition of this um, inferior good is that the income effect is negative. So when you draw these indifference curves, you have to make sure that the income effect from this point to this point here uh, is a negative move. Uh, so to kind of contrast that, let me show you the setup for um, a normal good. So again, we started at this point, ended up at this point, given a decrease in the price of public transport. What would it look like for a normal good? This is the setup that it would look like for a normal good. So we started at this point, put BL sub 1. We decreased the price of public transport, giving our new BL sub 2 over here, giving this new point. Okay, so let's break down uh, the shift from this consumption bundle to this consumption bundle. First off is the substitution effect. So um, keeping this Katya on the same indifference curve, we go from this point to this point. So we've kept them on the same indifference curve, but this new line over here, the dotted line, uh, all it does is shift relative prices. So going from this point to this point is all substitution effect. Uh, and the substitution effect is positive. Um, and then going from this point to this point is all income effects. And notice that the income effect here is positive. So um, we've kept the relative prices on this new hypothetical budget line the same as the relative prices for our final budget line. So shifting from this point to this point, all income effect uh, is also a positive shift because this is a kind of a hypothetical normal good. So the other thing to note is that the indifference curves here look pretty kind of standard and normal. So you can see that this indifference curve here is basically the same as this indifference curve here. And then we can impose that, oppose that to our inferior good example. Remember I drew the indifference curves kind of really specially, where these, as the difference curves get close to the car travel axis, they're super close together um, because car travel is a, uh, a normal good. And then the indifference curves for the public transport axis, the inferior good, uh, ha are very far apart. Uh, so that's that. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'll do a GIF and good example and be sure to link to it at the end of the video as well. Thanks and have a good day. Let me know if you have any questions.